those two pictures. So that's not a silk fence. And, and so at first glance, that's the opposite of a silk fence. That's, that's a retaining wall. Were, so, those, were those pictures taken after the stop work? So, so let, me, let me just get to the, to the, the idea that we're, we're trying to figure out the permit, what the permit says, and, and what we observed on the site. So the permit says it's going to be a silt fence, which implies that it's on grade, that you're on the ground. And that's clearly not a silt fence. That's, so that's actually the opposite of what the permit implies. So the other side is got you know, the same kind of thing here. So here's the other side. Well, there's a fence there, and there's pool equipment and air conditioning equipment on it. And there's obviously, again, that's not a silk fence. That's a retaining wall. It's, it's the opposite of the permit. Now, if, if they would have put that they were putting up retaining walls, it would have been reviewed as retaining walls. It would have, the permit would have been different. Uh, I don't know. My understanding of code is that if, if if you're 30 inches above grade, it needs railings. Now I don't know what the exceptions are to that, but I know that you know when you're on a porch or something like that, if, if you're 30 inches off the ground, you need to have a railing or some sort of protection. Now I don't know if if that would have required it or not because we never we never got the permit. Now if you look at our permit. What are the things 48 inches or 37 inches? That retaining wall on the side, does it have a surcharge? Yes, it's got a house sitting next to it. There's a house seven feet away. There's a house here. There is pool equipment. There's air conditioning. There's the fence. The pool is a little bit further down. So this wall has a surcharge. It has a very large surcharge. Now, our requirement says that you don't need a permit okay, if it's less than four feet and it doesn't have a surcharge. It says you can't have a surcharge. That's got a surcharge on it. That's, that's got a big surcharge on it. It's got a house sitting there. So whether it's 47 and a half inches, 48 and 3 eighths, or 49, it doesn't matter. Okay, even if it's less than 48 inches, it has a surcharge. So that exemption doesn't hold. You can't climb into that exemption. So the question, does it need a permit, seems to me to be very clear. It has a surcharge. So you can't climb under the under 48 inches. That's 48 inches. Now, if you add more fill to it, you do all sorts of filling or whatever, that doesn't shorten the height of the wall. The wall has still got, a, a, it should have a foot underneath. A footer should, or a foot, I believe it's 12 inches minimum for a footer. If it's 47 inches or whatever over there, and, and, or yeah, 47 inches or 40, whatever, and you add the foot, adding more fill to it isn't going to change that. It's not going to change the height of the wall. Adding fill beside it doesn't change the height of the wall. That wall is still going to be over 48 inches. So again, I don't know how final grading would change the height of a wall. Okay. Final grade is not going to change the height of that wall. Now, when we do, so part of what, what we do is, is we look at risk. So when we do risk assessments, what we do is we look at the probability of an event happening and we look at the cost, or, or what's going to be the loss. So we look at these kinds of loss functions. So if it's a low probability, but there's a very high cost, well, we typically buy insurance. That's your house burning down. Those are, those are things like that. And for us, when it comes to construction, there are very high costs that could be involved if, that, if the house burns down or if we do something wrong. The way we mitigate that is we hire the best inspectors with the highest qualifications that have all the certifications, and that's the way we minimize our risk, is by us doing inspections, us looking at it, and I'm willing 
is I'm the one that hired Steve. I'm willing to hire the best inspectors. That's a risk we can accept because they will inspect it. Now, in my opinion, that wall was not inspected. We never got to see it. No permits were pulled. I'm not willing to take the risk on that wall because we didn't look at it. We didn't get a chance to inspect it. We didn't get to see the permits. The downside of that wall having a failure is very high. The downside is high. That house could slide. The pool equipment, if the wall failed, the pool equipment could rip away, having plumbing issues, the air conditioning. We don't know what happens if that wall fails. So on that wall over there, I am not comfortable at all with that wall not being inspected. Now, on the other side, it's a different story. It's an empty lot on the other side. So if you apply the same analysis and you say, on the left side, if that wall were to fail, what's the cost? What's an empty lot next to it? So if, if that wall fails, you fix the wall. There's no house on it. Anybody that comes after the fact, the wall will be there. They can build accordingly any new people that move in. So I don't see an issue with the left wall as far as the, the downside risk. So in my opinion, on that side, it's a different risk that we inherit. One of the other things that we have to look at as the city council is the issue about, we talk about moral hazard. When we talk about moral hazard, what we look at is the idea that if, if you can go ahead and build without permits, if you can do that, and you can build right next to somebody's house, and do it without permits, and we say, that's OK, we'll let it slide, that's a problem. That's a moral hazard problem. If, if you do behavior which is risky, and we let you off the hook, then that's going to provide more incentives for other people down the road to go down the same path. If, if you do something without permits, and we find out about it, and all we do is say, Never mind, we can't do that. that. That's a policy issue. So, recognizing that we're going to have to work collaboratively to get this house built. We, 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 we want you to build a beautiful house. We want you to, to invest in Lakewood Village. We want you to be successful. Um, my suggestion would be that. The retaining wall on the basement face lot on the right, the one next to the house. The I'm one, just the one that's showing now. No, the other one. The other ones. Okay. That one for me, the risk is too high of, of, of downside risk, given that it was not inspected, and it needs a permit because it has a surcharge. It has a huge surcharge. So I guess for me, the question would be. Um, is there a way that we can get? Um, is there a way that we could get Brad and Steve together? Is there a way that you could come up with some process where you and Steve could collaboratively work to to meet Steve's concerns? on the wall on the left, where there's an empty lot, where that wall could stay. Because there is no downside to that wall staying. Well, I believe from day one, that's what I've welcomed. So yes, the answer is yes. So I, because we've got to get through 19 inspections together when the house comes in. You and Steve are going to have to engage in a collaborative effort down the road to get this house in. So I'd like to start that path now. Um, so that's, that would be my recommendation that, uh, 
that we split the baby in half. And I believe Steve's a professional. Steve's been at this for many, many, many years, quarter million inspections. Steve's a class act. Okay. I know he can. I know that you can work together. I, I know Steve can do that. So I, I think that would be my my take on that. If you'd remove the stop work order, they could do that. Yeah, I think I think I think that's a mechanical thing that we'll have to work out. You know, obviously you can't take something down and leave it dangling. Um, but But I'm gonna. But if you say there's a way to work it out, that's the best way to do it. That stop work orders. Uh, that. So I, I can get through that tonight. Okay. 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 So so that's 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 my opinion. Okay. So let me let me then ask my my counselor, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Well, what I'm trying to do is cut out and get down to the point of is this: these do these walls violate our uh, code? And it. It seems like, from listening to all of it, really what it boils down to is the surcharge. You correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but that's really what creates the problem over here, just as far as the permit goes, whether that's a major concern. Because, I mean, in looking at the, the code here, that surcharge is very specific there. It says if there is a surcharge, then the forfeit thing doesn't matter, right? Is that correct? And, and I think what what our job here is just to boil it down to does it pass or not? And I don't know, it, it just seems like unless I'm misunderstanding something, but that wall anyway, I don't know about the other one, but that wall does violate it just simply because of the search. It's not a finished wall. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 okay. We're, we're discussing this. Right. I mean, that's that's my take on it. You guys uh, no, I, correct I, me or I, I agree with you. I think it's really less about the height and more about the surcharge. Um, I do have a couple of questions for Steve, if you don't mind. Hypothetical situation, not this project. If you were to inspect the wall, is there a pre core inspection? Is there any kind of inspection to the footing, the steel, any of that kind of stuff? Normally, uh, flat works, foundation, we come out, we require an engineer to sign off. Number one, when we come out, there's other things we may be looking at that an engineer won't look at, sign off for, okay? In this instance, because I didn't see it, obviously, I really don't know what it was. Well, well I so would ask. Let me hold on. Let me back up. So, Steve, Steve, my question is hypothetically, not this wall. How would you go about inspecting it? Right. There is a pre core inspection, and you're comparing yes. to engineering drawings. Yes. Okay. To match them up. Okay. Got four up. So if that's part of the issue here, you can't see inside the company. What the hell you uh, Thank you. Um, the other question I had was about the weaker. Let's try and find some middle ground here. If I think I'm okay, we can, we can leave the, the wall on the north side. Really got to figure out what to do this stuff. This can I ask a question? Side. Yes. On the inside, south wall next to the house, where the rocks the are. The one that has surcharge in my lot. That house? Both of them. Absolutely. It's the one with the rock. Okay. Um, how how much? South side next to the house. How much were you planning to 
You said it's not finished. I, I understand. What is your final grade to the inside? On to your lot? We said one, one, to, two we said one to two feet when we were finished and we were actually going to pour concrete which would add structural integrity to the base of the wall. So, so this is the first First, I knew it. Well, the first you got, I got a chance. To no, no, that's yeah, why we're here. Okay, yeah, that's not right. All right, okay, let's let's get back but, to but this. Okay, you guys have your chance. You know, it's thirty years, so there's. I don't uh, understand. I don't because if you say you're going to be within a foot of the inside, now you have twelve inches of surcharge and not twenty-four. That becomes a moot point. So we have to be fair. Well, I, I'm just trying to understand how he's surcharging my lot. And right. what I have to do to meet that surcharge. Okay, hold okay. on. Stop, so, stop, stop, stop. Okay, okay. So, okay. Steve, okay. We'll, let, let us finish our let's, discussion let's right here. Let's discuss it on the I needed let's, more information. Okay, let's, let's, not, let's, let's not go there. Let's, all right, let's, you guys can talk outside. I, I guess we're, I, once I'm out of space, this is where you know, I think I'm kind of agree with the barrel there. I think the wall on the north side, we'll figure out the wall on the south side, we got to, we owe it to, to the existing homeowner there. We cannot. Linda, it was a concern that it was going to be damaged, or it has already been damaged? No. He, he was what, did he say, what did you say? The damage has already occurred. The, the already occurred damage, he showed uh, pictures of uh, dirt that had been removed. Uh, this fence in a, in a section had been dug down, and the, uh, what was it? The structure bars below the, the iron fence was exposed just because dirt and grass had been removed. And then he, he was concerned about uh, future damage and integrity of its foundation. Eric, what do you got? So, um, I think there was a lot of information there. <laughs> I think it got personal pretty quick. But, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to fall in line, too, with uh, pretty much what Daryl said. I mean, it, it seems like the, the wall on the other picture seems fine. Um, the, the larger wall with the, the surcharge, I, I, I agree there's got to be some no ground here met. Um, and particularly, I mean, if we were to let that go as is, and then you got the other homeowner upset, potential damage. And I don't know if are, are there, you guys aware of the damage? that brought to your attention yet? Nobody has said anything okay. else. Uh, but, I, but I can tell you, uh, there are many engineers, and see, you'll, you will agree with me, those walls can be x-rayed, they can be core tested, they can be anything you want them to test if you want to take the time to do it. So if you're saying you, at your professional assumption, is that it's a surcharge that that wall will not handle, I would, no, no, I would. no, no, you can't restate the question. No, absolutely not. That's not the question. The question is, do you need a permit? That's what you're appealing. We didn't we say anything about no. the wall being designed. We're, I don't we're know how these are. We, we had that conversation. That's, so, that's a miscommunication. You already agreed. It, it was is, a miscommunication. It, it, it's your main question that we're discussing up here. The appeal is, does the wall need a permit? That, that is not exactly the question. The question so, is, is his letter accurate? That, you've already had your chance to speak. So yeah, but I'm, I'm hearing new evidence. What we have to deal with here is, okay, does it need a permit? So, I don't know how, I don't know what it means code or not, but that's not what we're here to decide. Now, uh, reading our building code, right? So, 13.2 or whatever it is, right? It specifically says in there that any wall at four feet doesn't need a permit unless there is surcharge. Clearly there's surcharge here. Now, again, I'm not an engineer. It's a Mr. Cook's point that could be a sound structural wall, but again, we don't know that because there's more than four years to look at it, right? So for the neighbor that's there, Obviously, there, there's concern there. Maybe this would have all been avoided if it was a permit or if it was inspected pre 
but again, more to point out that it wasn't, and it should have been. And I guess I agree with the comment there, the comment where the left side of the wall, there's no structure, but I can it. This side, I think there should have been a structure. Okay. So, Um. Well, the, the other side of the wall, I, it seems to be a new point now. Um, as for Mr. Cook, the neighbor, you said you weren't aware, but I think that I think that's a big issue. Oh, okay. I just think that you can't affect the neighbor's property, so that has to be addressed. Obviously, maybe not in this meeting, but it has to be addressed in general. Um, the problem, I think, is there was a lot of chitter-chatter afterwards between Mr. Cook and Steve, and so... If you listen to that and you're talking about a surcharge and if someone talks about whether it was final or not, the um, problem is I don't know that much about it. I'm not an expert in this. You know, Steve is, obviously. Um, the to me now, it's kind of a question whether it was a finished product or not. So no one really knows that. And according to Mr. Cook, he said it wasn't finished. So my question to Steve would be, are we allowed to ask that question? Can we talk to them? Yeah, so my, if it wasn't finished and they said they were going to do something else, is there a way to make it right with the surcharge? In my professional opinion, yes. Meg Resmond's test to show rebar inside. No, I've done it many times. The key is how far down to the inside with no lateral support, okay? If our builder could get a make resonance test to show here's rebar, 8 inch on center or whatever, any pictures? So let's look. Yeah, pictures again, again Steve, I think we've... I think, Here, I think no, I'm not part. done. I'm not done. I need to finish that. Now, if you're going to raise the inside at, to a specific height, okay, there's the key. So my highest point, 48 inches, okay? So if you bring that up 28 inches to the inside, you're putting concrete up against it, make resonance test, you don't have 24 inches of lateral load at that point, I would not have an issue with that. But again, I just found out, and, and again, tonight it's miscommunication. We wouldn't be here if you said, hey, can I talk to the bill official? That, that's all it is. But if he does that, it, it, it makes the surcharge issue move. Hold on, hold on. It was a building permit required then if he would have done that. If he would have. Given me the setup to show where that grade was, I would have said no. I would have said no. I'm just straight out of the book. This is what it says. This is what I'm going to make my determination. Tonight's the first time I heard. If we're going to raise that inside next to the house. It's going to plant on the driveway into there. It can't be a driveway. It's inside the setback. You can't put a drive so, so property. Steve, yeah, are, are you, does the surcharge refer to just when there is dirt only on one side of the It's a lot of, yeah. The way so you're saying the way if the there's dirt, dirt on both sides, there is no surcharge? No, there, it takes it away. You just have a concrete wall. Equal, equal pressures, okay? So then if you go back into the code, 105.2, where you have, no, 404.4, where you have less than 24 inches of lateral load, then you don't get to move point. Is that clear? I mean, please, go into more depth that I need to explain. And I understand that. what you're saying, and if that's correct, the problem is right now that that, that wasn't built that way. How do you build it if, if you're going to build a, a wall with a surcharge? Well, let me, let me rephrase that. If you're going to build a wall and you're going to have no surcharge, how do you build it? Do you just dig a trench and you have to do it that way, or are you allowed to rip all that out to build a wall? My front yard has no surcharge. I have a retaining wall. There, there's other walls in town. There's a small wall on the property line. No problem. There's so no, there's nothing. So it sounds like 
All right, so here's what it sounds like. It sounds like you essentially, if I hear this right, you build a five foot tall wall approximately with a foot, foot deep footer and 47 and 9 sixteenths or whatever it is, it's just tall. You built that wall and then you're going to turn on and backfill it with dirt. Up within a 18 inches of the top, you're going to backfill it with dirt. <coughs> but then why'd you build it in the first place? I'm, I'm confused. If the neighbor's lateral loading my lot, why would I not want to protect my lot? You want to explain that? I guess hey, we're, 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 we're talking about, about it. We're talking okay. about anyway, it. Anyway, so I, I well, guess you don't want anything coming on your lot. I mean, okay, you here, here. Oh, I want my okay. lot to go okay. on. Okay, look. All right, stop. We're talking up here. All right, we're talking up here. Look, here's, all right, so you've got, you've got level ground like this. You've got level ground. They're not excavated down. Then they built a retaining wall. There was no, so they excavated down, squared it up. Now they built a retaining wall. Now, you can't put a driveway there because they put the retaining wall right on the property line. So there's a seven-foot setback off that retaining wall. We've got a seven-foot setback. Right. So the only way to have it have, let it have less than two feet of unbalanced fill is they're going to have to go back and add dirt on the other side. So there's dirt on both sides of the retaining wall and add that dirt back up to within two feet of the top. Then there's less than two feet of unbalanced fill. But why would well, you have taken the dirt away? Here's, here's another thing. thing. So, so I, I, I think, know. yeah, I, I think we're kind of getting... Well, let, here, here, let, let me just... I, I, can't, I mean, that's interesting what you're saying, but I think the problem we had tonight voting on this appeal is that there is no dirt there. And as it is tonight, I'm not sure exactly. there, where there is a surcharge at. there. And so as far as tonight and making this we, we were stopped in the middle of the truck. truck. Yeah, that's, that's, kind of, that's, that's where I'm going, is that based on what we see and what we've heard, it, it doesn't, it requires a permit. But what we've also heard is that there's still additional work. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm, the last thing we want to do, I mean, this is not going to be, if you tear the wall out, then it's just, you're, you're potentially compromising the house next door even more. So the, the best path forward is to try and figure out, is the wall structure meet the engineering guidelines? So if there, if I guess what I'm comfortable with, if our building inspector, Steve, can come up with a way to get there. So uh, what he mentioned earlier, the best path forward is you do the pre core inspection, you match it against the engineering, make sure it's there. If there's a way we can so reverse engineer as if we can get to a pre core inspection and improve and feel that it meets the incident, it was built per the engineering guidelines, I think we But, I mean, as it stands tonight, it doesn't, I feel it requires a permit. I know that there's a lot of disagreement on that. But May I suggest a solution? I think we're still debating at the table. I know, I'm just asking, I'm not suggesting it. It, it, it sounds like. The, my opinion, I think we should let Steve and Brad get together, see if they can work something out and hold this kind of advance. And can we work something out? That was going to be my solution. Can I can I suggest it? Are you asking? Sure, you're going to take credit for it now. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to give you all the credit for it. Uh, well, well, I'm, I'm suggesting is to lift the stop work order and then let Steve and Brad try to work it out. And if Steve can always put another stop work order, I, I agree. That, that's that's a, yeah. So I mean, it, it seems like the, the way to do this is to is to see if Steve and Brad can get together and and work this out. <laughs> and we we let them work it out. I mean, even okay. a little ball. Yeah. And we'll just uh, we'll hold it off. Um, so I have one other condition. Steve, work it out. Don't care if you get it, get it figured out. Leave notice with Linda what you're going to do. Oh. Whatever, whatever the agreement is, us as a council can come in. Just, it got brought to our attention as the board. Moving forward, you, you can put it in front of us. I just want to see closure and understand yeah. what's going on. I, um, I don't want to have another one. Tad, yeah, Tad, what do you what do you recommend be, be a, be action? Be, should we should we say somebody has to come back 
next council meeting and say where you're at? Should we get an update? Should we just table the appeal until the next council meeting? Table it until the next council meeting. Then we're going to stop work order for 30 more days. And is everybody okay with that? I have the that? right to pull that work order tomorrow morning. Steve's, yeah, yeah. We, we don't know. That's separate. Yeah. That's, it's that's separate. Not, that's separate. Not, that's you guys worked that out. You guys worked that out. I think, I think you guys could. Yeah, that's a good solution. If you're going to try to work it out, it's better for us not to vote on it tonight unless you can make it another appeal after you work it Actually, out. Actually, let's meet over on the property. Yeah, that'd be great. 10 o'clock, be here. I will watch the So I can see what you're, you're, you're proposing to do. I okay, you know. guys, you guys can work that out. Okay. Uh, perfect. Fair enough. No, do they need to do anything about their appeal? Do they need to, or we just take what that's good enough? We can take what. Okay, so, okay, moving forward, I understand the table part. If, if Steve and the builder and everybody comes to an agreement, there's no need for them to come back. If they can withdraw their agreement. Either withdraw or we can just say, <laughs> okay. There's no, if they don't withdraw it, we can still vote to say it's okay or yes. maybe, or is the action we want yeah, to It's got to come back next month if we take it, unless it comes right. back. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, ideally, if Steve and the builder work it out, we would prefer the appeal rate withdrawal and yes. it's just off. Correct. Okay. Do I have a motion to table? I make a motion to table the appeal decision until next month. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All Give me one more. Okay. Thank you for a very enjoyable meeting. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So where it, where it works, it works, and where it doesn't say anything, the original is still there. Right. This is essentially to, uh, I'll just give a little bit of a brief background on the bill. This was uh, fixed to uh, account for House Bill 2439, which is the building materials bill. Essentially what this bill did is that cities no longer have the authority to regulate specific materials in the construction, renovation, maintenance, or alteration of commercial or residential structures. And applies to all stages, applies to new construction, and applies to remodels as well. So essentially, you're required, you can't by ordinance require, say, 80% masonry of the cut on the front house. Uh, as long as it's a method approved by one of the last three iterations of the model codes, uh, the 2012, 2015, and 2018 versions, as long as it's in one of those, it's now allowed at the, at the municipal level. 